Hello, today we'll be discussing the inguinal canal, femoral triangle, and hernias, and the relationship between the inguinal canal and the femoral triangle. Um, this model that I did right here came from um, Kashubu Tahori on YouTube. Her model is very artistic and I really like it, but um, I didn't quite understand what she was trying to explain clearly, so I made my own model so that it would be easier for people like me who didn't quite understand her model and I will definitely link her video um, up above because her video was my inspiration for making this um, model so here we go um, first off we've removed the skin we've removed the campus fascia and the scapus fascia and this is like the lower abdominal pelvis region okay so when we remove the skin and the associated um, connective tissue the first thing we see is the external oblique muscle the external oblique muscle um, has a wide range of um, connective tissue and this um, and its upper nerves is from the inguinal canal sorry the inguinal ligament and the inguinal ligament runs from the um, iliac crest um, to the pubis synthesis anatomy will know specifically where but we just need to know that it runs from the somewhere in the iliac region to the pubis synthesis okay so how here we see we have the external oblique muscle if we were to um, cut this a little deeper or if we were to lift up the external oblique muscle we'll see we have the internal oblique muscle and look at how the internal oblique and the external oblique muscle fibers are running they're running obliquely okay after the internal oblique we have the transversus abdominis muscle look at how it's running um, almost transversely after the transversus abdominis muscle, we have the fascia transversalis muscle. And after the fascia transversalis muscle, we have the extraperitoneal tissue, which I did here as the yellow fatty layer. And after the extraperitoneal um, tissue, we have the peritoneum. Okay? Alright. So, um, in relation to the peritoneum, we can see that we have the external iliac artery and the, and the external um, iliac vein respectively. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the formation of the inguinal canal. So the inguinal canal is more prominent in males because we know that the testes is an abdominal structure. So it's, it's formed within the peritoneum and it needs to go into the testes. So let's imagine we had the testes right here. And then a structure which attack was called the gubernaculum attaches the testes to the to the scrotum which is somewhere down here so the testes will travel will pierce through the peritoneum and pierce through all these significant um, um, muscles and fascia to, to go into the scrotum and the journey of the um, the journey of the testes for these structures creates a canal known as the inguinal canal. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to roll up this paper. This is the paper I made with it. I'm going to roll it up and then see how the testes passes through it. This um, associated structures so we could see the formation of the inguinal canal. So here we see it. We see that the inguinal canal is formed through the muscles from the peritoneum. Transverse is here and it goes into the testes so this is the inguinal canal right here okay so this is how the inguinal canal forms and in males the inguinal canal is made up of the um spermatic cord it's made of the spermatic cord and the genital femoral um, nerve and in females it's made up of the round ligament of the uterus and the genital femoral nerve okay so as the testes um that is through the inguinal canal it also pulls along with it these these um, structures and these structures here forms the fascia and the chromatic muscles of the um, somatic cord so that as we can see the first fascia that the testes pulls about is the fascia transversalis and the fascia transversalis forms the internal spermatic fascia after that, we have the internal oblique muscle. The internal oblique muscle forms the chromastric muscle for the spermatic cord, and the external oblique muscle forms the um, external somatic fascia. Okay, so also we can see that since the inguinal, re the, um, inguinal canal starts in the fascia transversalis, we can see that the deep inguinal ring is in the 
superficial transversalis and the superficial inguinal ring is in the external oblique muscle okay so now that we have seen the formation of the inguinal canal let's just talk about the relationship in the femoral triangle okay so here we have the femoral triangle so the base of the femoral triangle is formed by the inguinal ligament sorry the um lateral boundary of the femoral triangle is formed by the sartorius muscle which i didn't include there but i did do it as lines and the medial side of the femoral triangle is formed by the adductor longus okay so within the femoral triangle we have the femoral sheath now the femoral sheath is um formed by is formed by anteriorly by the um fascia transversalis and posteriorly by the iliac fascia okay i didn't put it in this model because it would be too packed up but in the femoral sheath we have the femoral artery femoral vein and femoral um well, not femoral but the um lymph nodes okay in the femoral um sheath the most medial um portion of the femoral sheath is the femoral canal and the femoral canal is nothing but an outpatching of the parietal peritoneum remember that all these vessels if we look the external iliac artery and the external iliac vein they transverse beneath they go beneath the inguinal ligament to form the femoral artery and the femoral vein so what i'm trying to say is as the external iliac artery and external iliac vein crosses the inguinal ligament they form the femoral artery and the femoral vein now within the femoral canal remember the femoral canal is nothing but an odd pouching sorry about that again the femoral canal is nothing but an odd pouching or parietal peritoneum that's where lymph nodes are found okay all right so now let's talk about um hernias now hernias there are three types of hernias that we need to be um aware of a femoral hernia direct hernia and an indirect hernia okay So the first one we're going to talk about is an indirect hernia and an indirect well a hernia is nothing but protrusion of um, abdominal contents into a um, sac or into a, a weak, weak link of the abdominal wall or weak, weak link of anything really so if we have a protrusion of um, abdominal contents in the inguinal canal which is the structure here it'll be called as an indirect hernia now, an indirect hernia is more common um, in infants because if this inguinal canal is not obliterated properly, so it's more common in infants. And an indirect hernia um, is covered by all three layers of the spermatic fascia. Remember? Now, a direct hernia is protrusion of abdominal contents. It skips the deep inguinal ring and it goes straight into the superficial inguinal ring. Now an indirect hernia, uh, sorry, a direct hernia is more common um, in older men since in order for your peritoneum to pass the um, transversalis abdominis muscle, that transvers transversus abdominis muscle must be extremely weak. So this is why um, direct hernias usually occur in older men. The last one we're going to talk about is a femoral hernia. Femoral hernia is when... Um, abdominal contents protrude into the femoral canal um, it's more common in women really and the femoral canal is the one that is most dangerous because it can cause incarceration and strangulation of the abdomen okay so now i'm going to just show you the locations of it and if you were paying attention you could see that the external iliac artery gives off the inferior epigastric artery which is what will form our hassel's back triangle so i'm just going to shift on to a different diagram from first aid okay so here we have it we have the external iliac arteries and the um femoral artery and the femoral vein and then the external iliac artery gives off the inferior epigastric and the external iliac vein gives off the inferior epigastric vein okay so the rectus abdominis muscles form, forms the medial border of the um Hesselbach's triangle and the inferior um, epigastric vessels forms the lateral border of it. So, in the Hesselbach's triangle is where we find our so we find our direct inguinal hernia. 
whereas below the inguinal ligament is what we call our femoral hernia remember the femoral hernia was just a protrusion of the in the femoral canal right here okay and an indirect hernia is formed laterally to those um inferior epigastric vessels i have it on my model if you would like to see it it is a bit complicated that's why i went into this and if you want to know more about um inguinal canal inguinal ligaments you could check out this it so this is my model thanks for watching